Mother Bear raised a tiger and a lion for twenty years, but one day something happened. The bear had been found in the worst imaginable conditions in the hands of poachers. However, what the rescuers found with her was even more surprising, two cubs, one tiger and one lion, also in captivity. No one could understand how these three different animals had ended up together in such terrible circumstances. If you want to know what happened, stay with me. This story takes place in a distant forest in Tanzania. On a day like any other, Mother Bear was hunting with her cub, enjoying the tranquility of the forest. Suddenly, a loud noise startled her. She realized that something was wrong. The bear decided to carry her little one in her mouth and try to flee. But sadly, it was already too late. The poachers had set a trap in her path, and the bear had fallen into it. The bear fought with all her might to free herself and her cub, but the trap was too strong. The poachers approached slowly, armed with rifles and knives. Fear gripped the poor animal, and it became even worse when they discovered that the bear had a cub. Without mercy, one of the hunters shot the little one, whose lifeless body lay there forever. Unable to accept what had happened, the bear let out a roar of pain, which the hunters took advantage of to sedate her. They didn't care about the pain and fear the bear felt at that moment. In this way, they were able to take her away, only interested in the skin of the little cub. The bear was taken in a truck to an unknown location, where she remained in captivity for some time. Although the bear survived, her heart was definitely broken. She would never forget the loss of her child and the trauma caused by the poachers. The bear was introduced to a closed and dark space that was completely unfamiliar to her, and she had no idea what to expect. In this strange place, fear began to take hold of her. But in the midst of the darkness, the bear could see two small figures huddled in the corner of the cage. They were the tiger and lion cubs that had been left there for who knows what reason. They had huddled together to keep warm and protect each other. Most likely, their parents had died trying to protect them. The bear could see fear and uncertainty in the eyes of the cubs, and something in her heart was moved. She felt that someone had to be strong for them. The mother bear approached the cubs slowly and began to examine them with her nose. Despite being different species, she felt an instant connection with them, seeing that they were alone and in need. She protected and cared for them as if they were her own cubs. From the little food the hunters gave her, she shared it with her own cubs to keep them nourished. She stayed close to them throughout their captivity, protecting and embracing them to keep them warm and safe. The mother bear's instinct was so strong that even in such a desolate place as a cage, she did everything possible to ensure the cub's safety and happiness. In a few days, the three of them began to form a bond that would help them survive the difficulties and pain they were going through. Fortunately, things were about to change for them. One day, while the bear and her two cubs were still in captivity, they heard a noise coming from outside the cage. Soon, they heard more noises, shouts, and voices that were getting closer. The bear, tiger, and lion cubs became alert. When the door of the cage opened, they were greeted by a group of men dressed in uniforms and armed. It was the police who had managed to track down and capture the poachers who had captured the bear and the cubs. The officers quickly started to dismantle the place and made sure that all the animals received medical attention and proper food. The bear, tiger, and lion were scared at first, but they soon realized that they were safe. The three animals were transported to the zoo, where they would have a permanent home and be cared for by professionals. They quickly adapted to their new environment and began to explore their new home with curiosity and enthusiasm. The bear was especially happy to have more space to move around and explore, and her cubs felt safe knowing they were in a protected place. The zoo staff worked diligently to ensure that these animals, who had gone through such a difficult situation, received everything they needed. The animals were regularly fed, received medical attention, and were closely monitored to ensure their good health. The bear continued to raise the tiger and lion as if they were her own cubs, and their bond grew even stronger. This bond puzzled the staff and they tried to separate them several times, but it proved to be an impossible task. 
Despite their differences and origins, the three animals became a family. They spent their days together, playing and eating and sleeping and rubbing against each other affectionately and with devotion, the mother bear dedicated herself to taking care of the cubs as if they were her own children. She protected them from any danger that might arise in their surroundings and fed them with the same dedication and love she would give to her own offspring. The tiger and lion, in turn, saw the bear as their mother and spent as much time as possible with her, cuddling up by her side to sleep and playing with her during moments of fun. Despite being different species, the three animals understood each other perfectly. There was no rivalry or conflict between them, they simply loved and respected each other. Visitors to the zoo were impressed by the close and affectionate bond of this family. It was a unique and touching sight that is rarely seen in life. As the years passed, the bear, tiger, and lion became popular attractions at the zoo, and visitors enjoyed seeing the three animals together in their habitat. The story of how the bear had raised the tiger and lion not only during their time in captivity but also at the zoo became a legend, and people admired the strength and love of the bear towards her adopted cubs. Twenty years had passed since the capture and subsequent liberation of these animals. Their relationship remained intact, and for many years, they were the main attraction at the zoo. But one day, something changed. The years had taken their toll, and despite the care of the mother bear, the tiger and lion began to age, and their immune systems were not as strong as before. Although they were still her little ones, their health started to decline. Unfortunately, the tiger, the youngest of the three, passed away. The bear and the lion mourned the loss of their adopted sibling, and their grief was even stronger when the lion also passed away a short time later. The bear was left alone with her memories of the happiest times with her two cubs. Despite her sorrow, the bear tried to move forward, but everything felt different. She no longer had her little ones playing around her, and she no longer heard their laughter or purring as they slept. Everything seemed empty and meaningless. After the death of her two adopted children, the mother bear remained alone in the zoo. The caretakers noticed that she had lost the sparkle in her eyes and that she no longer had the same vitality as before. Without a doubt, this mother was in a state of deep sadness, and it seemed that nothing could console her. It was then that the caretakers decided to do something to alleviate her grief. In order to honor the memory of the two cubs she had raised, two statues were built in their honor in a nearby natural jungle. The statues represented a tiger and a lion and were placed in a spot where the bear could see them. At first, the animal seemed indifferent to the statues, but after a few days, she started to visit them. The bear approached the statues and smelled them, gently licked them with her tongue, and hugged them with her paws. It was evident that she was remembering her two adopted children and finding some peace in the company of the statues. The zoo staff was deeply moved to see her in this state and felt comforted knowing that she had found some solace in the statues of her children. The emotional connection between the animals was truly touching, and the bear had shown that love and tenderness know no barriers of species or race. Over the decades, conservationists have worked tirelessly to help improve conditions for all living things, and the way animals are treated has changed dramatically in most countries. But in some parts of the world, there are still innocent creatures to save. After more than 30 years in the wildlife industry, Jane makes a shocking discovery in rural Peru that catapults her into the global news and makes her question her entire career. Jane decided at an early age that her purpose in life was to help animals. She is a true doer, never afraid to put herself in danger. Jane has participated in dozens of protests and marches, and has done everything in her power to raise awareness for animal rights. That's why she has been the president of Animal Protection International for more than 30 years. Jane leads the investigation and action on reports of animal cruelty, oftentimes they are pretty straightforward. But one day she discovered something in northern Peru that she never wished to miss again. Over the past few weeks, Jane and her team have been following the anonymous tip-offs they have received. The only information is that someone thinks they saw some kind of large animal lying in the back of the truck, but the deeper they look, the more concerned they become. 
Jane discovers a traveling circus nearby and knows there must be a connection. She has spoken with local officials, police and other wildlife groups to organize raids. Today is a big day. Jane is nervous because she barely slept the night before, and when she arrives at the police station for her morning briefing, Jane can barely find the words for her to say. After the briefing, the group immediately set off for the location. They traveled in three trucks, two full of people and one with some equipment that Jane had collected in case the animals were in any danger. These include sedatives, a first aid kit and various medications. When the trucks jolted on the gravel road, they started to slow down. There was a wooden sign stuck in the dirt with the name of the circus written on it in marker. Here they are. The truck turned off the engine, pulled the handbrake, and the crowd swarmed out. At this time, Jane was at the end of the line. Her job now is to follow directions. Police will lead them into the location and make sure no one is in danger. Now Jane is getting very nervous. She was given a body armor, but when she looked around, she saw the holster and batten on the officer's belt. Her heart started beating faster. But she didn't have much time to think. After a quick signal, the group set off. They made their way through the circus surrounding the scene, trying to avoid detection. A few minutes later, the big tent came into view. It towered over the rest of the belongings, with rusting caravans, old cars and large cages scattered around it. But as they approached the edge of the item, a shot rang through the air. Everyone looks around and ducks. The policeman puts his hand on the holster. There was a moment of silence, then a voice from a distance told them to stay away. One of the officers pulled a megaphone from his bag and responded loudly. I'm the police, we're searching the property, please come out calmly. There was no response for half a minute. Then the voice came again. It tells them that it is impossible for anyone to enter their property. That's when the police let Jane and her colleagues back into the truck. They don't know what's going to happen next. A police officer escorted them to a safe vehicle, where they waited for a long time. Minutes became hours. Three hours later, the rest of the officers joined them. It's a bad news. The people who ran the circus were not willing to give up, and the police thought it would be dangerous for them to break in. After everything was explained and something to eat, the police went back to the ringside to continue negotiations. Jane waits in the truck, wondering what she's gotten herself into. If they are so desperate to keep the police out, what are they hiding? Is she in danger? But before she could worry, someone knocked on the truck door and told her it was time for her to come to work. So she put the vest back on, climbed out of the truck and followed the police. Other members of the group are still cleaning the property. As they approached the first caravan, Jane could make out movement inside. Leading officers yelled and knocked on doors to make sure no one was armed. They did the same thing. Until all the circus workers stood outside in a group. Anger was on most faces, but a few looked ashamed. Jane didn't know the reason until later. Three police officers remained with the workers while others continued to clear the remaining property. They start with the largest tent. Inside were empty stands and piles of trash. Afterwards, they were moved back outside to their cages. Wild animals were banned from circuses a few years ago, so most cages are empty. But there are some farm animals. Chickens, goats, cows and a few horses. Jane didn't like seeing it, but there was nothing they could do about it. She checked all the animals to make sure they were all healthy. Fortunately, they all seemed to be in good shape. They're almost done sweeping the property when Jane is told to head back to where the caravan was. She wants to check something. There are dozens of old cars, many built from scrap parts. She wandered the parking lot until she came to an old pickup truck. The paint is a soft baby blue, but there are brown cracks and yellow stains here and there. On the side is written the name of the circus in black letters. As Jane walked to the back of the car, she could see a heavy chain sticking out of the back. A tarp was covering the back of the truck, 
which was slowly pulled away to reveal a cage made of thick metal strips underneath. What's even more shocking is what's hidden inside it. Lying in the corner of the truck is a huge animal. The creature turned its head to Jane, who looked into its glassy gray eyes. It's a lion, it's no ordinary lion, it's a cougar. These are proud Peruvian animals that belong in the wild. But the lion was sitting in the back of a truck with a heavy collar and chains weighing down on it. Jane quickly got to work. She had no idea how much time she would spend trying to save the animal. Before doing some initial checks on the lion, she needs backup. Normally she wouldn't be this close, but the lion was so frail that Jane was inches from its face. When the rest of her team arrived, they began rescue efforts. They moved the pickup closer to their facility and decided that leaving the chain on the lion was the easiest way to get it out so far. They then moved him to a larger enclosure, which they reached just after the truck, where one of the team members would cut his chain. Jane is standing outside the cage while a police officer tells her some backstory. The lion's name is Mufasa and he has lived in this truck and traveled with the circus for the past 20 years. For the first time in decades he was able to walk around alone. But three days later, he will again experience things he never dreamed of. After making sure Mufasa was healthy and ready, Jane and her team let Mufasa back into the wild at Terakea Ecological Reserve. It's a protected area, so they know he's safe. For Jane, she couldn't restrain her emotions. She had been holding back for days, but when she saw Mufasa take his first few steps back into the forest, she burst into tears. It was everything to her and she will never forget those three days in Peru where they saved the life of a mountain lion. The camera captured the deer giving birth to her fawn. But then something surprising happened. Lacey. The deer in the story. Is an albino deer bred at the Shadow Valley Deer Farm. Albinism is a rare skin condition that happens to both humans and animals. When it occurs in animals, it makes their fur white in color. Lacey got pregnant and was about to give birth. But immediately after the fawn's birth, the caretakers, Bertha and the rest of the staff, were left speechless by what they saw. The farm is located in West Virginia and has red and white-tailed deer of varying unique colors and patterns. Lacey was a notable deer on the farm because of her color. A white-colored deer in the wild would be prominent anywhere and everywhere, putting it at a greater risk. Albino deer like Lacey are always easy prey for hunters and predators. Luckily, all the Shadow Valley farm deer don't have to worry about predators or hunters, as they are adequately protected and monitored in a beautiful safe enclosure. For several reasons. Lacey was one of the most loved animals on the deer farm. About two weeks after Lacey's birth, her mother was lost, and Lacey was left all alone. She felt out of place and even found it hard to eat. The staff at the farm were worried. She wouldn't be able to make it on her own. However, one staff member named Bella always maintained hope for Lacey and typically became Lacey's mom right from when she was a fawn till she became an adult. Bella was the one who captured the surprising event in the video. But before we get into that, let's do a short throwback of Lacey's rough early life. After losing her mother, Lacey suffered from different infections. This is understandable since a mother's milk is vital for every deer calf. But in this case, Lacey had none. Thankfully, the farm was full of kind vets. Who would do everything they can within their power to ensure. They saved an animal's life. So, in Lacey's case, all hands were on deck to ensure. The poor little deer was nursed back to health. Bella put in a lot of effort, and as Lacey grew. She was thrilled that her actions didn't go to waste. She ended up developing a very close bond with the albino deer. And so, when Lacey became pregnant, it was no surprise to the other staff that Bella was the first one to notice. Before breaking the good news to them, Lacey had endured hardships and fought for survival, earning the hearts of everyone in Shadow Valley. 
but apart from Lacey's strong will to survive. Another reason Lacey won a special place. In her keeper's hearts was her unique coat. Lacey's albinism condition made her coat all white. Just in case you're not aware, this white coloration in albinism is due to the absence of melanin. Finding an albino animal is very rare. And deers are no exception. Some people consider spotting or owning an albino animal as a sign of good luck. And since Lacey was the farm's only albino deer, she was a VIP member of the farm. When Lacey was confirmed pregnant, all the farm staff were excited. They couldn't wait to see what Lacey's baby would look like. Seeing as Lacey was uniquely colored, some were hoping she would give birth to another albino deer, thereby increasing the number of albino animals on the farm. There was no way to tell what sort of fawn Lacey would give birth to. Everyone just had to wait and see. Male deer usually reach sexual maturity at around two years old. Although female deer may start mating and reproducing at a younger age. As early as seven months old. Lacey's case, however, was different. When they paired her for mating. She had refused to mate with any of the mature male deer on the farm. Mature male deer are usually dominant. And Lacey wouldn't go near them. For some reason. It wasn't clear if the behavior was. Because of her childhood trauma or if she was just shy. And so, the farm staff had to try with a lower ranking male. When they did. Lacey finally yielded. The farm staff kept an eye on her both to. Record the occasion and to observe in case. She needed any help during pregnancy. Usually, it's hard to tell when a deer is pregnant, especially when the pregnancy is still in the early stages. But the staff at the farm were well experienced. One of the first signs is when a female deer begins to clean her fur frequently. This is the sign that Bella noticed. Which made her suspect Lacey was pregnant. Her hunch was correct because Lacey's belly began to bulge after a few weeks. But something unfortunate happened. However, amidst all the joy and expectation, Lacey ended up losing the pregnancy. The miscarriage occurred during the second trimester and broke everyone's heart. Lacey herself fell ill from the trauma of losing her fawn. It was a devastating time for the farmer. But everyone believed Lacey would pull through. Just as she did during her childhood. It didn't take Lacey too long to conceive again. It was just six months after the miscarriage that Bella spotted she was pregnant again. This particular one was so special that it would get the attention of millions of people. Deers don't have an exact gestation period. Usually, the length of the pregnancy depends on the species. But the times range from 180 to 200 days. So, Bella's gestation got to this time. Bella started following pregnant Lacey very closely. Though she did her best not to. Make it too apparent to the animal so that she wouldn't be frightened. One thing Bella noticed, however, was that Lacey would often frequent the meadow area. It was as though she was looking for the perfect spot to give birth. About two weeks after this time. She became restless and showed physical signs that proved the time of labor was nearer than ever. Lacey went to the meadow again. And Bella followed her closely behind. Suspecting she would give birth. Bella was determined to capture the lovely moment. So she quickly set up her camera and found a spot. Where she could take the best shots. She made sure not to take her eyes off Lacey. But the ordeal soon became an exhausting one. You see, Deers are like humans because they go into labor for long hours. Lacey labored throughout the night. And even when Bella woke up the following day. She had still not delivered. This meant that Bella still had the opportunity to. Take those unique delivery photo shots she wanted so badly. But then, as soon as Bella looked away from the deer for a few seconds. It was just at that moment that Lacey delivered her baby. The baby deer had a lovely brown coat. Like a typical deer. 
Bella wasn't all that happy because she had failed to capture that fantastic birth moment. But she had waited throughout the night, thinking it was over and feeling devastated. Bella got up to leave. But then she noticed something. Lacey was still in labor. This was almost unbelievable, because first-time dear mothers usually give birth to only one calf. If Lacey could deliver two babies, that'd be a miracle. While preparing to deliver her second fawn, Lacey was still tending to the first fawn, grooming his fur as any doting mother would. However, she couldn't give him breast milk because her mission wasn't complete. Sooner, she started contractions for the second baby. It was at this moment that Bella zoomed in on the camera. She was determined not to miss this one like the first. As the second fawn was emerging, the first baby deer slowly went over to inspect his twin brother, and even began to lick him. The simple action was a good bonding activity, especially for deers like these. But the real highlight of the story came when the second baby fully appeared. Bella realized something shocking and beautiful at the same time. While she was expecting another brown fawn, what came out of Lacey was an all-white calf. Precisely like its mother. It was hard to tell at first because fawns are coated by yellowish afterbirth grazier. But when Lacey began grooming the baby deer, its actual color and beauty came to light. Oh, Bella could ask for. The mission was accomplished. Lacey now had two beautiful babies to live for. She stood up with motherly pride to begin the long task of nursing her babies to adulthood, giving them the best milk, the best training, and, of course, the best motherly affection. She was determined to provide them with a childhood that she never had. On the prairie, the male lion found an injured kitten and took the kitten back to its nest. What happened next was beyond everyone's imagination. It is a daily routine for a male lion to roam the grasslands. As the king of the forest, the lion has unparalleled majesty and arrogance on the grassland. Under the sunlight, the male lion's golden mane fluttered in the wind, and his body was strong and strong. Its steps are steady and powerful, and each step falls on the ground, as if it has the power to shake the sky. Suddenly, the lion heard a sound coming from the grass. It stopped and listened carefully. The sound was not loud, but a faint groan came with the wind. The male lion scanned the surrounding vigilantly, but found no suspicious movements. However, it was a familiar voice. But it was different from usual. It felt a little puzzled, but also a little curious. As the moaning became clearer, the lion became more and more certain that it was the sound of a kitten. The kitten's voice was weak, full of helplessness and pain. Subconsciously, the male lion wants to leave here quickly, because the kitten is likely to become the prey of other cats. However, its curiosity prevailed. Eventually, it decided to look for the source of the sound to see what was going on. The male lion walked cautiously towards the direction of the sound, and a breeze passed through the grass from time to time bringing a fresh breath. They approached slowly, and the lion saw the kitten lying in a clump of grass. The kitten had been attacked by other felines and was weak with many wounds. The male lion instinctively wanted to regard the kitten as prey. But when he approached the kitten, he saw the pleading and helplessness in the kitten's eyes. And suddenly a strange feeling surged in his heart. The kitten tried to stand up, but she was too injured to move. Her limbs swayed. Her body fell powerlessly to the ground. And she let out a shrill cry. Seeing the kitten's fragile body in wounds. The male lion couldn't help but wonder if other predators were still nearby. However, it decided to take the kitten back to its den and give her some help and shelter. The male lion carefully held the kitten in his mouth carefully avoiding thorns and branches. The kitten's body is light and soft. 
but also extremely heavy. The lion felt some pain in his neck. But he didn't stop. He knew that what the kitten needed most now was his help and shelter. On the way, the kitten's breathing gradually stabilized. And she gradually felt at ease. The lion's breath made her feel warm. And she curled up in his mouth. As if returning to her mother's embrace. The male lion shook his steps gently. Trying not to jolt the kitten. He could feel the kitten's body trembling slightly in his mouth. But he didn't stop because he knew it was the kitten's only chance to survive. Finally, the lion came to his den. He gently placed the kitten on the grass. Carefully licking the blood on her body with his tongue. The kitten's breathing became more steady and the wounds began to heal. The lion licked the soles of his feet. And then licked the kitten's forehead. As if to comfort her, telling her that everything would be alright. The male lion realized that his mood softened. It was originally the overlord of this land. And it didn't need to take into account the feelings of other creatures. But at this moment. It didn't want to hurt this little life. It found itself developing an unspeakable affection for the kitten. It wanted to help her and take care of her. At first the kitten was scared and trembling. But slowly, it began to feel the lion's love. Warm and caring, gradually relaxing. The male lion licks the kitten's wound with his tongue every day. Keeps cleaning the wound, and brings back some food to feed the kitten. The kitten's wounds gradually healed. And his body began to become healthy. The male lion also began to try to play with the kitten. Patting the kitten gently with its strong body. And the kitten began to purr softly. Indicating that it was very happy. For the next few days, the male continued to guard the kitten. Providing her with food and water. The kitten was very weak at first. Lying quietly in the nest, but over time. She slowly began to regain her strength. The lion noticed that the kitten was gradually regaining. Its vitality and becoming more and more curious. The kitten started exploring around the den, catching insects and playing. While the male lion stood by her side to guard her at all times. The kitten's physical condition gradually improved. Her hair became soft and shiny, and there was more life in her eyes. The kitten became very lively. Running and jumping around in the lion's den every day. Chasing the lion's tail, jumping on the lion's back and playing with the lion. The lion is very pleased with the kitten's gradual recovery. He began to establish a friendship with the kitten. Every day, he would accompany the kitten. Go for a walk together. Show her the beauty of the grassland. And take her to drink the clear river. The kitten is full of gratitude and dependence on the lion. And she becomes more and more at ease and at ease in front of the lion. Gradually, the kitten began to feel the lion's love and care for her. And she became closer and closer to the lion. And began to play with him. Under the care of the lion. The kitten is recovering gradually. Her hair became soft and shiny. And the wounds on her body gradually healed. The lion's care and protection of the kitten made the kitten full of. Gratitude and dependence on him. And a deep emotional bond was established between a cat and a lion. In the lion's territory. The combination of a male lion and a kitten aroused the curiosity of other lions. Some even laughed. However, lions don't care. They just focus on each other's company and love. When they eat together. The male lion always fills up the kitten first. And then gets his share when they play. The male lion is always careful not to hurt the kitten. When they sleep together the kitten is next to him. Enjoying his warm body temperature. In the lion's den, the kitten's body gradually recovered. And she became more and more lively and dependent on the lion. The relationship between them is getting closer and closer. And the tacit understanding between them is getting deeper and deeper. Although there is a big gap in size between them. Their hearts are equal.
and they trust, care and protect each other. As the days passed, the bond between the kitten and the lion grew, much to the amazement of all who witnessed it. Their friendship makes people rethink what true intimacy is. Regardless of differences in race, species or cultural background, and cannot become a real obstacle. The tacit understanding between the kitten and the lion is getting better. They eat together, the kitten will drink a sip of water first, and then wait for the male lion to start tearing the food with his mouth. At this time, the male lion will take a bite first, and then push the remaining food to the kitten. They played together, and the kitten would jump up and poke the lion's nose with its paw and the lion would gently bite the kitten's ear with his mouth. They slept together, and the kitten napped peacefully in the lion's lap. While the lion guarded her and protected her from all harm, people were shocked and moved by the camaraderie between the kitten and the male lion. As this type of cross-species intimacy is rare, but the kitten and the lion didn't care. They just enjoyed each other's company and love. Their friendship cannot be limited by any racial or species differences. And no matter where they are, they always rely on each other. In the end, the kitten and the lion spent the rest of their lives together, becoming an incredible legend. Their stories also make people understand that true love and friendship have no limits. No matter what kind of person or animal you are, you can build a deep relationship with the right partner at the right time.